Canada's Eco-Fiscal Commission says Canadian provinces should put a price on carbon to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But new carbon pricing regimes could put some Canadian businesses at a competitive disadvantage, especially if carbon costs more in one Canadian province than it does in another jurisdiction, either within Canada or abroad. A new report from the Eco-Fiscal Commission examines which provinces would be pinched by differences in carbon pricing. It suggests only a small subset of the Canadian economy, about 5 percent is vulnerable to those differences. 18 percent of the GDP of Alberta and Saskatchewan would be more exposed to such pressures due to the prevalence of resource extraction industries. A much smaller percentage of Manitoba GDP would be affected, followed by Ontario, British Columbia, Nova Scotia and Quebec. For those industries that would be affected, the Ecofiscal Commission recommends governments provide temporary support until businesses can adjust to the reality of carbon pricing. Chris Reagan is chair of Canada's Eco Fiscal Commission. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the headline me. here seems counterintuitive to me that the impact would be that low. This is a tax, after all. Well, so I think I think you're right. I think it is counterintuitive. One of the things that, that people don't, I guess, remember is that a, an enormous part of a modern economy, and this is true for Canada or Australia or France, but it's true for every Canadian province, is that most of our economy is services. Uh, there's all kinds of services, but services are very emissions unintensive and a large part of services are aimed at the local economy. So when you, when you get into carbon pricing and even differential carbon pricing across provinces, it's just not that, not that big an issue. What surprised you about this analysis? Well, I guess what surprised us is that, that the exposed part of the Canadian economy as a whole was as small as it was. So our numbers suggest that with a $30 per tonne carbon price, which is what the, what the tax is currently in British Columbia, only 5% of the Canadian economy is is exposed, what we call more exposed in the paper. Um, now, of course, that is different in different uh, in different provinces. Right. So, as you as you pointed out, if you look at Alberta and uh, Saskatchewan, it's more like eighteen percent of their economy. Um, but because in, of oil and gas, simply that, put. well, because of refineries, bitumen upgrading, fertilizer, cement. There are specific sectors that are particularly emissions intensive and quite trade trade, trade exposed. Pardon me. Um, and those are the ones where there's potentially the issue and those industries aren't uniformly spread across the country they tend to be more located in some provinces. You have some recommendations for provinces and how they might be able to support industries that would right. be affected right. what would those recommendations? Well the first be? recommendation before we get to how to support is this is this is a problem that in aggregate is small enough uh, it is a, an isolated problem, though it, important in those situations. So it's not an obstacle to policy. That's the, really the first lesson. Okay. You, it's not uh, the reason to delay policy. It's not the reason to 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 avoid policy measures. But when you actually get into uh, a heads-up design of policy, what we talk about is identifying those sectors that are genuinely at risk. So this is a targeted measure. You want to make it very transparent. You don't want to have backroom deals. You don't want to have things that aren't data-driven because we don't want to under undermine the credibility of the policy. So targeted policies, transparent policies, and the third T is temporary. By you don't want to shock an industry, so you want to give them, if they're genuinely exposed to these risks, you want to give them uh, some breathing room, but at the same time you want to send a price signal that will provide them with the incentives to get cleaner. So you've got to, you've got to strike that balance. This whole conversation exists in the weeks that we are talking about the very same issues on TPP, that there are industries that will yep. be affected there. The algorithm, the math, the thinking is very, very difficult. I agree. Um, so, so changing the structure of the economy, which is what free trade agreements are all about, but it's also what carbon pricing is. Over time, you're going to change the structure of the economy, and you have to think, I think, in a very heads-up way um, about you know how that structure is going to change over time, and which are the parts that are going that can make a, an easy transition, and which parts make a more difficult transition, and then you want to, I think, be very heads-up in your policy design and and make sure that you can facilitate. That. That transition. You argue against a national approach, which surprised me because when I think of a tax and I think of the GST, it is simple because it's it's a national execution. Why do you believe it needs to be province by province? Well, what we you know, we really argue in favor of the practicality of a provincial approach. When you look at the charts in this report, and we have four charts, one for each of four provinces: BC, Alberta, Ontario, and Nova Scotia, and you see that 
um, they're quite different. The, the exposed sectors are different. The sizes of those sectors are different. Um, and so those kinds of differences, I think, demand differences in policy design. That's one reason. And the second reason is that if you're going to generate revenues from a carbon pricing policy, and you will, to have those revenues flow out of the province toward shall I call it the center, right. I think is both an economic and a political challenge. Whereas if you keep those revenues and the, and the provincial government can recycle those revenues back into the economy in a way that it chooses, that, that suits it, its political and economic needs, it just makes a lot more sense. What's an example of a policy idea? Of a, of a policy idea that a province could execute to mitigate the impact of carbon well, pricing. So, for example, if you were going to have a cap and trade system, yep. what you could do is you could give some fraction of those permits away for free to a particular sector based on you know, based on the data, based on the data that shows that it's genuinely exposed to these risks. But you could give a fraction of those permits away and scale that down over a few years mm -hmm. so that you're giving some assistance, but it's temporary and they've got a clear price incentive to get better. In fact, um, British Columbia introduced in its budget in 2015, the, the, earlier this year, they took a small chunk of their carbon revenues right. and they dealt with their exposed cement sector in that kind of way. Interesting. Thank you for your time. Thank Chris you. Reagan, we